We noted that you have the three lines of defense of the immune system. Let's start talking about the first line of defense, which are the external barriers. Most important, first and foremost, your skin. Your skin is a very hostile surface for bad guys. It's generally dry. Um, the sweat that you have causes it to have a low pH. And remember, back from Bio 201, the outer layer of your epidermis, um, and well, your entire epidermis, is somewhere like, you know, 40 layers of, uh, well, stratum corneum in particular. Then the outermost layer is something like 25 to 30 layers of dead keratinocytes filled with keratin. So, you know, keratin is a hard, tough protein, 25 to 30 layers of dead cells. You know, it's, that's basically just, just a giant barrier to keep stuff from getting into your body. So the skin is very effective, all right? Closely packed cells, shed them periodically. Remember, you know, you shed your entire epidermis every couple of months or thereabouts. Um, and coated with antimicrobial chemicals, um, such as defensins. Those are little peptides that poke holes in membranes. Lactic acid from your sweat, which uh, lowers the pH and makes it difficult for bacteria and things to live. Viruses can't survive that acidic environment. Lysozymes from sweat, tears, mucus, and saliva. Lysozymes are enzymes that break down cell walls of uh, various pathogens. So don't underestimate the importance of the skin. And conversely, that's why any break in the skin is potentially serious. I mean, sure, most of them don't turn out to be, but any one of them is. Anytime you've got a break in the skin, you need to monitor it, all right? Lots of bad things can get into your body. It's not so bad here. I mean, especially living in Tucson, nice, dry environment. But I used to teach tropical biology classes and took students down to Guatemala and Belize. And down in the tropics, where it's really humid, and God, there's all kinds of various protists, you know, trypanosomes and all kinds of amoebas and stuff like that living in the tropics. And a break in the skin there can get serious in a, in a hurry. That's why each time I, I would tell my students when we first got down there, I said, you know, we'd have our little meeting where we got together and discussed all the rules and stuff so that I did not end up getting sued or, you know, put in jail in a foreign country. So I would say, look, you guys, any kind of a cut, um, you need to pay attention to it. If it starts looking funny, you need to let me know right away, all right? And one time, one year, this guy had something on his foot, and he didn't think it was a big deal. He didn't pay much attention to it, didn't let me know. He ended up getting really, really sick. He got some kind of an infection. We ended up having to take him to, um, we had to get a helicopter to take him to a hospital, um, ultimately in Guatemala, I guess it was. There wasn't hardly anything in Belize. We were in Belize, and they took him to a hospital in Guatemala. We had to meet up with him later. But a break in the skin is always really serious, okay? I mean, always something you need to monitor because it can become really serious. Then mucous membranes, all right? Remember the malt brothers, Balt and malt? So mucus is like a sticky trap again. Bad guys get stuck in the mucus. Like those strips they have, those fly strips you see there in the picture. You hang those up and all kinds of flying bugs will get stuck on them and they can't get loose. Yeah. So again, uh, mucous membranes have a lot of lysozyme and enzyme that breaks down pathogen walls. And of course, then the malt brothers, Balt and Galt, Balt, Malt, Galt, Malt, Balt, Malt, Galt. Balt and Galt Malt, the Malt Brothers. All right. And then also the first line of defense we call miscellaneous barrier strategies. So again, barrier meaning things to try to keep bad guys out of your body. So cilia in the respiratory tract, little hairs, and they all point the same direction. So if anything gets into your respiratory tract, it basically comes back out. You know how like when you clear your throat, you're like, <clears> throat> a lot of that is, you know, cilia and stuff that are forcing things towards the exit, forcing them back out through your mouth. Coughing and sneezing. Again, it's not the virus that makes you cough and sneeze, it's your immune system, all right? Your immune system causes you to cough and sneeze because if bad guys are getting down in there, you need to get them out. There you can see, look at somebody sneeze there. Can you see why wearing a mask just might make a little bit of a difference here? Oh my God, I can't believe there's still people that say that masks don't work. What planet are those people from? Um, clearly, if you had a mask on, it would prevent most of that from infecting other people around you. T 
tears, you have enzymes and tears, lysozymes again that break down bacterial cell walls. Cerumen, earwax, remember? You know, your ear looks like, you know, a lot of bugs and things would look like, ooh, there's a nice dark little tunnel. I think I'll go in there. Well, the cerumen keeps them out. Low pH of gastric juice. So your stomach has a very low pH. A lot of pathogens can't live in that acidic environment. Emesis, the fancy name for vomiting. So, you know, that piece of pizza, you know, covered with all those parasitic worms and bacteria. You know, if it's really, if there's way too much on there, then your stomach will say, oh my God, this is covered with nasty shit. Get this out of here. It comes right back up, all right? And diarrhea. Remember the gastrointestinal tract, as I said before, is like a 30-foot long tube, mouth on one end, anus on another. So, you know, if you get bad stuff in that GI tract and you need to get it out again, it's just basically which door is closer, the front door or the back door. You know, if it's closer to the front door, then emesis. If it's closer to the back door, diarrhea. Either way, you're trying to get stuff out of there. Diarrhea is basically trying to keep you well. Diarrhea is trying to get the nasty stuff out of your body so you don't get sick from it. Acid secretions of the vagina. Yeah, that vagina is a pretty hostile damn place. Am I right, guys? I am. So there are acidic secretions in there. Think about it. Your vagina is yet another opening to the outside world. That's a potential way for bad guys to get into your body. So there are acidic secretions in the vagina that try to keep bad guys from surviving in there. And also the low pH of urine and the periodic flow of urine. Ladies always pee after sex, you know. Because sex, you get all kinds of the other person's nasty cooties all over down there. And they can get in your urethra. Again, it's a nice entry point. So what do you do? You pee after sex. That flow of urine will wash the bad guys out, okay? And urine is also generally acidic, and so that will try to prevent bad guys from being able to survive. And down in the connective tissues of your skin, you have hyaluronic acid, which again lowers the pH and makes it difficult for things to survive. And there you see little Kenny. Please excuse me for being late. I have explosive diarrhea. Yes, Kenny, please stay home. When you have explosive diarrhea, do the world a favor. Stay home. And urine palace, I have no idea what that is, and I don't want to know. All right, so looking now, um, second line of defense. We did the first line of defense. That was the skin, the mucous membranes, and the miscellaneous barriers. All right, let's now move inside. So internal body defenses, the second line of defense. So what happens if the first line fails and things actually get inside of you? It's all right. We got the second line waiting for them. All right, so antimicrobial proteins. There are a bunch of proteins in your body that can go after bad guys. They include things like interferons, which are especially effective against viruses, complement proteins, which are effective against a wide variety of bad guys, and then in addition to the proteins, there are the actual antimicrobial cells. These are natural killer cells and the phagocytes, all right, all of the other white blood cells, the neutrophils, the basophils, the eosinophils, the monocytes. Then pyrexia, the fancy name for fever, all right, fever again is actually helpful, and inflammation. And once again, inflammation is actually a helpful process in general, as long as it's not out of control. So notice, therefore, the second line of defense has four major categories the antimicrobial proteins, the antimicrobial cells, fever, and inflammation. Let's take a look now, therefore, at interferons. These are small proteins that provide protection against viruses. They're secreted by your own body cells that have become infected by a virus. So viruses basically, did you take microbiology? Do you know how viruses work? Viruses aren't actually alive. Viruses are not cells. They're basically just inert packages of genetic material. They, they skirt the boundary. They live in the twilight zone between life and death. So they're not alive, but when they get into your body, they take over your body cells, and then they turn your body cells into virus factories. So whereas the cells in your body are normally making a variety of proteins, once the cell becomes infected by a virus, Instead of making the normal proteins, it now starts making viruses. And so what, what does that mean? It means when a cell of your body gets infected by a virus, can we rehabilitate that cell? Can we cure that cell? No. It's just like being bitten by a zombie. 
Once you're bitten by a zombie, you're going to turn into a zombie. Therefore, you have to die. There's no cure. The same thing with cells of your body. They're infected by viruses. They have to die. They're going to turn into zombies, okay? So interferons are part of that whole process. So they're secreted by infected body cells, especially lymphocytes, into the ISF, and they bind to surface receptors on neighboring cells, all right? So what they do is, again, they're like little Paul Revere's. Um, a cell that's been infected, it's too late for that cell. That cell's now going to die. But that cell can now at least tell cells around it, hey, you guys, there are bad guys here. Save yourselves, all right? So neighboring cells receive that signal, the interference, and they start making antiviral substances, all right? And they also, interferons also activate macrophages and natural killer cells. And interferons also, when they encounter another, if they are signaling to another infected cell, they induce that cell to undergo apoptosis. Do you remember apoptosis? That's the so-called programmed cell death. Basically, when interferons reach a cell that's already been infected, they cause that cell to commit seppuku, hare kare. The cell kills itself. It undergoes apoptosis. So interferons are very important. Um, basically, there's that doctor show called House MD, which is hilarious. I actually binge-watched all eight seasons. And yeah, I, by the end, it was just like an endurance. It was like a marathon thing. The plots were stupid, and I couldn't stand most of the people. But House himself is hilarious. I continue to watch it just because he was so good. He's so rude and so arrogant and so good at insulting people. I just love to watch that. But basically, every, every episode of House... It basically takes them an hour to figure out what's wrong with the person. And during that hour, they try virtually everything under the sun. And pretty much every episode of House, at some point, House has them try interferons. Because if you got any kind of a virus, interferons. So you can, you can administer interferons as a drug, and those will work very well. In the upper right, I've got Gunga Dean. I don't know if you know that. A poem by Rudyard Kipling, an awesome movie with um, Cary Grant, Victor McLaughlin, Douglas Fairbanks Jr. Gunga Dean. Rudyard Kipling, you know, Jungle Book. Oh, people say, oh, Disney. Oh, why didn't you say so? Um, so uh, 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 Rudyard Kipling wrote this poem called Gunga Dean, and it was about British soldiers in India, and they had an Indian servant who they horribly mistreated. It was just, it was god-awful what, what happened to the native Indians when the British were there. But at any rate, this Indian servant who was horribly mistreated, at one point the British soldiers were about to march into a trap, and Gunga Dean knew it, so he stood up on top of the temple and he blew the trumpet and that warned the British soldiers that they were marching into a trap. Gunga Dean was shot by a sniper and killed, so he gave up his own life in order to save the British who had mistreated him. It's like, oh my God. But that's kind of like what interferons are, you know, an infected cell. An infected cell will secrete interferons saying, I'm going to die, but at least save yourselves. It's a classic poem, so you should read it sometime. It ends with the lines, you're a better man than I am, Gunga Dean. Saying that even though the British soldiers had mistreated this, hor this horribly mistreated this Indian servant, he was overall a better person than they were, and even they recognized it. So viruses, viruses are cool. People talk about reincarnation. If I'm reincarnated, I want to come back as a virus because I want to kill people. Um, so there's HIV, there's herpes. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that one. Chicken pox, I had that. Cold, there's a cold virus. The flu virus. I should probably put coronavirus in here. I just didn't bother. Um, so, uh, Batman and Robin. I, don't, I think I need antibiotics for my cold. It's a virus! Psh! Remember, antibiotics are for bacterial infections. They do nothing against viruses. Do not take antibiotics when you have a cold. You do not take antibiotics when you have a cold. You just basically drink orange juice and, you know, watch Netflix, and after a week, it'll be gone, okay? Uh, second line of defense, um, proteins. Here, we saw interferons. Here are the complement proteins, all right? So, by the way, it's not complement with an I. Um, uh, it's complement with an E, like complementary angles, remember, in geometry? 90 degrees. So it's not the I complement, like, oh, that's a nice shirt. It, what's that say? Um, it's a nice shirt. Uh, oh, crap. I can't even remember now. Um, and it's covered it up by the red thing, so I can't go back and look at it. Uh, it makes you look much thinner. Yeah, it's a nice shirt. 
makes you look much thinner. That's like a, a backhanded compliment. Um, but it's not that kind of compliment. It's compliment with an E, which means that the two things complement each other, all right? So they fit together, or they work together to do something. So the complement system is 30 or more antimicrobial proteins and protein fragments that circulate in the blood in an inactive state. They're there right now. You've got all these complement proteins in your blood right now, swimming around in there, just waiting to be activated. Now, there are many ways to activate the complement system. I'm not going to make you learn them. There's the classical pathway, the alternative pathway, the lectin pathway. You know, if you ever take a microbiology course, you may have to learn those. Um, I won't make you learn the different ways. But one way or another, when you get an infection, um, you do what's called activate complement, or sometimes the word used is you fix complement. Um, doesn't mean it's broken. It just means that you activate it. So you activate the complement proteins. Normally, they're inactive. But once you activate one of these three pathways, these proteins will now become activated. So what do they do? Well, there are four really cool things they do. They cause inflammation. That's one thing. Remember, inflammation is generally good. It's going to bring more blood to the area. That brings more white blood cells to the area, helps carry waste products away. Inflammation, as long as it's under control, is good. Immune clearance. So what the complement proteins do is when they find the bad guys, they stick them onto red blood cells. Remember, red blood cells get um, recycled in the spleen. And remember what surrounded the arteries going into the spleen? Remember the white pulp? So complement proteins stick bad guys on red blood cells, and then the red blood cells travel to the spleen, and then the lymphocytes and the macrophages and the white pulp kill them. See? Cool, huh? Then enhanced phagocytosis via opsonization. So remember, um, all those white blood cells eat bad guys, except the lymphocytes. They generally don't. But the neutrophils, the eosinophils, the basophils, the monocytes, they eat bad guys. That's phagocytosis. Well, what happens is maybe, you know, they're wandering around and there's a bad guy and they just kind of overlook the bad guy and they walk right by and they don't eat it. Well, what the complement proteins do is it's called opsonization. They basically coat bad guys with tapatio, right? I mean, doesn't everything taste better when you put tapatio on it? Well, that's what that's what enhanced that's what opsonization is. All right, complement proteins um, put tapatio onto bad guys, and then the white blood cells are more likely to eat them. Again, that's called opsonization. And then cytolysis via membrane attack complexes, MAX, M-A-C's, membrane attack complexes. So in the lower left illustration, you see that there are several complement proteins that have joined together. And what they've done is they've punched a hole in the cell wall of a bacterium. And once that happens, then, you know, the, the complete integrity of the cell is compromised. Stuff leaks out, stuff leaks in, the cell's going to die. So that's pretty cool. It's kind of like, you know, using a knife. It's kind of like, you know, they go up to bad guys and they use a knife and they just slit them open. And then they're going to die. So I want you to know those, by the way. That's important. I expect you to know the four effects of complement proteins. Inflammation, immune clearance, that's putting bad guys onto red blood cells so they get uh, taken care of by the white pulp in the spleen. Enhanced phagocytosis. Don't just say opsonization. I want you to say enhanced phagocytosis via opsonization. So in other words, you enhance the tastiness by putting tapatio on them. And then cytolysis via the membrane attack complexes, that's where you punch holes in the enemy cells. And there you go, there are the complement pathways. Um, nice slide here. You don't have to know the details of the complement pathways, but you can see what I'm saying, classical, the alternative, the lectin pathway. Ultimately what happens is these complement proteins start working together. So look, see there's C3 dissociates into C3A and C3B. And then it shows the four things I just talked about. There's inflammation, immune clearance, phagocytosis, and cytolysis. And now here you see some of those other complement proteins. The numbers for the number of the complement protein. Remember I said there's like 30 of them. Well, they have numbers. So it splits C5 into C5A and C5B. C5B binds with C6, C7, and C8. And then that binds with C9 and so on, all right? So um, several pathways activate or fix complement. It's a cascade of reactions involving complement proteins. 
Ultimately, C3 split into C3A and B. C3A loses inflammation. C3B promotes immune clearance, opsonization, phagocytosis, and cytolysis. You don't have to know in that detail. I won't expect you to know the difference between C3A and C3B. I'm just showing you that's how it works, okay? And there is the membrane attack complex. There you can see how all the complement proteins, number 9, number 8, 7, 6, and 5B, have all joined together to punch a hole in the bacterial cell wall. And there you see the attack of the Big Mac. All right, which is not one of the mechanisms of the complement reaction. Enhanced phagocytosis via opsonization, inflammation, defensins and lysozyme, cytolysis via MAX, immune clearance. Yeah, defensins and lysozyme, those are things like on your skin and so on. So that's different.